Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 11th of February 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly positive set, uh, start to the European equity market session uh, this week. Uh, there's a lot of optimism around US-China trade talks. Um, this week, um, US trade delegates will fly to Beijing to try and reach some sort of an agreement um, with their Chinese counterparts. There's no guarantees that this is going to actually achieve anything, um, but just the very fact that tra trade talks are actually continuing uh, is actually seen as a positive sign by traders and dealers. Keep in mind, there was a fairly big sell-off in, uh, in global stock markets at the back end of last week on Friday when, the, when President Trump was, um, suggested um, that the US and China weren't going to reach a trade deal by the March deadline. Um, but then again, this is this we've seen this movie before, whereby there's a lot of toing and froing going back and forth on comments from various different individuals in relation to uh, the, the US-China trade talks. Um, but for the, for the time being, equity markets, just for the very, very fact that the, uh, the US um, trade delegates are heading over to Beijing, seem to be taking that uh, as, as a positive sign. The worry about that is, though, is that it's almost as if some sort of positive news is already factored into the, to, uh, equity markets. And should, should uh, nothing be achieved, we could see the markets roll over. But if obviously it all depends on which way trade, trade talks go. If something is achieved, that could be a signal uh, that we're actually looking at heading to heading in, in the right direction. And bear in mind, global equity markets, by and large, have been bouncing back since late December. So that, any sign that any sign that U.S. trade talks are actually going in the right direction uh, could actually could be, be the next kind of leg up for the wider um, uh, upward move we've seen since late December. Um, also in the news today, we had some trade. We have some uh, number of economic indicators. Out of, the, out of the UK uh, and the fourth quarter of 2018 the UK economy in, in the fourth quarter grew by 0.2 percent meeting expectations um, but, but keep in mind we also had some disappointing industrial production and manufacturing production figures as well and the construction figures were disappointing too so we've, we've had slower growth from the UK and we've actually negative growth uh, from a number of the, of the smaller sectors that make up the UK economy so it, it, we've seen a bit of downward pressure on the pound on the back of that. Um, that also being said, it's not entirely surprising that the UK economy is cooling. The UK economy is very much tied in with the Eurozone economy, which is certainly cooling. It is in recession, and not to mention the fact that there's still major uncertainty in relation to Brexit. Um, what I'll do now is I'll start off by taking a look um, at some of the major markets. Taking a look at the FTSE 100, uh, so like I was saying that the Major European markets have been bouncing back since late December. We've had a, taken a bit of a breather in comparison uh, with, with the positive move that we saw last week on the FTSE 100, but we're still in this kind of uh, upward move, the, the, which you get the corrective move from the previous sell-off between October and December. If we can hold above this region here, this, this price action, uh, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play just north of 7,000, 7,011, I believe, uh, 7,000 also, if you can hold above that metric, we could see the market push on higher. And if you do look to push on higher, we could be looking at targeting this general area in around 7,220. If the market manages to turn, o turn over on itself and break below 7,000, we could be looking at back down towards this, this line here, uh, which is the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 68.72. And a break below that could take us back down to the late January lows of 67.32. It's a reasonably similar situation on the DAX over in Germany. We can see that we've seen a fairly decent bounce back since late December, but for the time being, the 100-day moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play at 11,330, uh, is actually a fairly decent resistance. And while we remain south of that, uh, we could see continued downward pressure on the DAX. We're also just below the 11,000 mark on the DAX, a big psychological number and has proven recently to be uh, a level of decent support. The 50-day moving average has been, coincide, has been coinciding with it recently. Uh, so if we can stay below, if we stay below 11,000, we could see further losses on the DAX. So if we drift to the downside on the DAX, we could be looking at heading back down towards the early January lows of 10,785. 
But if you push it, get, get above uh, 11,000, I would like to push on higher from there. And then the next level to keep an eye for will be, like I said, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play uh, beyond 11,330. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this trend line here. If you draw a high between the highs of June, July, and also of September last year, we get this trend line along here, uh, which would come into play just south of 11,500, maybe 11,450, somewhere in around there. Take a look now at what's going on over in America and the US markets, which are in, uh, which are in better shape. Starting off with the S&P 500, um, if we draw a trend line between the lows of February 2016 with the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line along here. And as we can see, back in October and November, it was well respected. We had a sharp sell-off well below it in, um, in December, but, we, but since then, we've been bouncing back. And we've managed to actually trade well above that trend line and we're still holding above that trend line so while we hold above that trend line that, that we could see further gains be made on the S&P 500 now the first area to keep an eye for to the upside will be this red line here the 200 day moving average which comes in at 20 at, comes into play at 27.45 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at, looking at heading up towards 2800 big psychological number and if we go beyond that this area here is going to be a big key one potentially in around the 2,815 or 17 mark. On a few occasions, that area acted as resistance in the back end of last year, so that could act as resistance in, in the uh, medium to near term. If, though, the market manages to turn over on itself yet again and fall back below this trend line, we could be looking at heading back down towards the 2,600 area or down towards the 50-day moving average at 2,613. So keep an eye out for that area for any kind of moves to the downside. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the Dow. Similarish price action we see on the Dow Jones. So starting off with the uh, draw trend line between the lows of February 2018 and also in, in April and also May, we get this trend line along here. Now I know it isn't absolutely as, as clear cut as the um, as the one on the S&P 500, but we could see here that it was reasonably well respected in October and November, and then once we had a firm break below it in December, the market sold off heavily. But like the S&P 500, the, the market pushed higher managed to run into resistance at that particular trend line but then actually got back over that trend line uh, i can see here and we're now actually firming holding above that so if we can hold above the trend line and we can hold above the 200 day moving average which comes into play in just north of 25,000, uh, 25,040 there thereabouts if we can hold above that we could be looking at retesting at uh, the 26,000 or up as high as 26,278 Dow theory tells us that the stock market averages must confirm each other. And as we can see here from this chart and what we saw on the S&P 500 chart, both US stock markets are above their respective trend line. So if both markets remain, remain above their trend line, it makes it more likely, you can be more confident that the both markets are going to continue to push on higher. If one's above while the other's below, that, 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 that shows indecision. Whereas if both markets fall back below the respective trend lines and those, you know, those trend lines be, uh, begin to act as resistance again, we can then become more confident that, the, that, that both markets will remain below their respective trend lines. So if we do see a drop back below uh, the trend line on the Dow Jones, we could see support come into play at this blue line here in around 24,226. And if you drop, drop below that, it might bring in the psychologically important 24,000 into play. And I'll take a look at what's going on over at gold. So gold has had a decent bounce back since mid-August, mid but really since about mid-November has been in a classic example of an upper trend. A nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And granted, it hasn't really moved a whole lot or so in the last week. It's moved a bit to the downside and it's kind of, and it been a bit lackluster. But nonetheless... Uh, the upward trend over the last few months is still very much in play. And if you look to press on higher from here, and we take out 13.26, the recent high here, we could be looking heading back towards 13.35, and then beyond that up to 13.50. Uh, if we do see the market manage to drift a bit lower, support may come into play in around the 1300, 
big psychological number, already, which is roughly this area here, also 1298. Uh, and if you drop below that, you could be looking heading back down towards this area here at 1276. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off with Brent crude. So Brent crude oil has had a, a decent bounce back since late, late December um, and it's managed to re regain a fair bit of the ground and hold above the 50 day moving average here, this blue line here, but it's really struggled to actually move on, progress on much higher. Um, the area, this price action here around 63, spot 35, seems to be acting as, res as resistance. It can't seem to get above that level, but at the same time, um, we're trading in a fairly small range. And while we hope we hold above the 50 moving average at 59 spot 25, it's likely that the upward move, the bounce back from December, is going to continue. But keep in mind, 63 spot 35 is acting as fairly decent resistance. Um, so if you do get a break above that, we could be looking heading up towards the mid November high of 68 spot 36. Where if we do see a break below the 50 moving average, that could be a sign that the wider downward trend that, 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 that began back in October could be, could be resumed. And we could be looking at heading back down towards 57.50 or if we head, heading back down towards the potentially as low as the $50 per barrel mark. It's a reasonably similar chart on WTI whereby we've had a fairly decent bounce back since late December. And the market has managed to actually kind of print out fresh um, multi-month highs. Only last week we got we got to levels not seen since uh, mid-November last year. But as you can see here, it seems to be fairly lackluster. It edged a bit higher, but then it's drifted a bit lower again. It's holding above its its 50-day moving average, which comes to play at fifty dollars point and uh, seventy-three cents. If we can hold above that, we could see the market push on higher from here. And if you take out the recent high of 55 spot 45, we could be looking at targeting this price here in at 58 spot 10. Whereas a move to, a move to the downside below $50 a barrel could point, uh, point us in the direction of heading back down towards 47 or even back down towards near the kind of 42 mark near the lows of uh, late December. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So as you can see here, we're well below the 200 moving average, this red line here. And even though we've, we've broadly been pushing higher from mid-December onwards, we can see more recently uh, that the market has been pushing to the downside in the last number of weeks. This area in at 113 seems to be holding up as fairly decent support. But if you have a break below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the 1 spot 12, 16 area. Uh, any moves to the upside? Uh, if we could find resistance in around the 115 mark, and if you go beyond that, uh, 115.70 would be the next, potentially the next big area of resistance to the upside. And now taking a look at pound US dollar. Similar as chart, whereby we, we've clearly gotten a fair bit of downward strength in the last number of weeks, and the pound, is, like the euro, has also been sliding versus the greenback in, re, in recent weeks. But notice how the pound is still well off the um, well off the 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 lows of December. So the pound has been drifting lower. We've fallen back below the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 1 spot 3028. While we hold south of that, it's likely we could see further losses. And if should we drift on lower from here, we could be looking at heading back down towards heading back down towards 1 spot 2818. And a move below that could take us back down towards the 126 region. If you do manage to actually move back above the 200 moving average, Keep on out for 132, this price area here. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards one spot 32, 90, 98 or 133 to the, uh, to the upside. I'll take a quick look now at what we can expect this week. Um, the week ahead article can be found on our trading platform. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, under news analysis, you'll find uh, the bulk of the analysis that myself and other market analysts produce. Um, the weekend article here tells us that uh, Dunelm have first half figures on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, we also have UK CPI. On Thursday, we have Theresa, Theresa May's Brexit Plan B vote taking place. On Thursday, we also have EU um, growth figures coming out. Keep in mind, Italy is already in recession. We're seeing signs of, signs of a slowdown in France and Germany, so keep an eye out for that. On Thursday, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange CME Group 
They have fourth quarter figures and they've been reported, as do Coca Cola. On Friday, we have US retail sales, which will be of particular importance uh, because this, this just gives indication of how confident US consumers are in actually spending. Actually spending. Uh, we've seen some broadly speaking some positive earnings out of the out of the US uh, in recent months. Uh, so any sign that, that that US consumers are actually willing to spend is going to continue on the continue pushing the economy on in the right direction. And on Friday we have we also have full year figures from Royal Bank of Scotland and we also have first quarter numbers from John Deere Group over in the US. Um, just while I have you here, I'll also talk to you about Insights and Chart Forum. On our trading platform under Market Pulse, second option down is Insights, which is this, this uh, update here. Some of the analysis that we do gets posted to the Insights directly on our trading platform. And throughout the day, we also have economic indicators of any um, growth figures or uh, economic announcements are released. Uh, they get updated on the Insights section of our trading platform. And also, here is Chart Forum. Chart Forum is a third option down on the Market Pulse tab. And this is where myself and the other analysts and anybody who has a CMC account can actually just take a screenshot of a particular chart and write some commentary on it on which they feel they, which way the price is going. And finally, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. That's all for me this week. Thank you very much.